some car manufacturers show you how their car handles around pylons. We want you to see how a Honda handles around pothole. You see, all our Hondas are made with front-wheel drive, McPherson strut front suspension, and have power front disc brakes. And after all, when was the last time you had to avoid a pylon? The Honda Civic was first introduced in 1973, and with the North American marketplace primarily dominated by muscle cars and V8 engines, you can quickly come to realize why a car with a low base price that is very practical and economical quickly took off and became one of the most popular cars worldwide. And with the 10th generation releasing in 2016 with a new turbo engine lineup, you could argue that the Honda Civic is one of the major factors that actually caused North American manufacturers to end their car production because the Honda Civic has always offered an amazing value, amazing features, and a reliable platform that you can really rely on. And since 1973, the Honda Civic has been doing just that. In this video, I'll be highlighting the history of the Honda Civic Si, and I'll be giving my opinion on what exactly is the best generation Honda Civic Si. Now keep in mind this video is completely subjective, you can have your opinion, I can have my opinion, and of course people are going to have different opinions on what the best generation Civic Si is. So let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite generation is. Let's get into the video. To start this video off, we're going to look at the first installment of the Civic Si in the North American market. And to do this, we have to go all the way back to 1992 where they did the first introduction of the 5th generation Civic Si. The 5th generation Honda Civic Si had a 1.6 liter 4 cylinder engine matched up with a 5 speed manual. It put down 125 horsepower, 106 foot pounds of torque, and this little guy revved all the way up to 7200 RPM. And you may be thinking that is not a lot of power, and you're right. But keep in mind this car only had a 2300 pound curb weight which is significantly lower than modern standards. The fifth generation Honda Civic Si was a car that made a lot of sense. The miles per gallon were 25 city and 33 highway. In 1992, it came at a price of $11,700, which in 2019 calculates to approximately $18,700, which means that it was a really, really good value when it came out. And with its VTEC engine, lightweight platform, and really good value, it makes sense why this car really exploded and gained a lot of popularity fast. It was very driver focused and had a lot of things to like if you were a car enthusiast and it is still a very sought upon model. And if you guys didn't know, I actually had a 1994 Civic Del Sol back in the day. It shared a lot of aspects with the Honda Civic and man that car was fun to drive. So overall, Gen 5 was really reasonably priced, great economically and it made sense why it became such a popular car. With that hatchback design, that thing was awesome. Up next, we have the 6th gen Civic Si. Now this generation is actually a bit weird because even though the 6th gen actually came out in 1996, the Si was only sold from 1999 to 2000, making this generation a bit harder to find on the used marketplace. The 6th generation Si again had a 1.6 liter 4 cylinder paired up with the 5 speed manual. However, this generation saw massive power increases coming in at 160 horsepower, 111 foot pounds of torque, and an 8000 RPM redline. However, the more power did come at a price because the 6th generation SI actually weighed 2,600 pound curb weight, which is 300 more pounds than the previous generation. With the 6th generation SI having a bump in power and a bump in weight, the fuel mileage was 22 city and 29 highway, so it went down from the previous generation. In 1999, the base price was $17,500, which calculates approximately to $25,500. This car is seen as pretty average in terms of pricing throughout the generations. But overall, this generation did get heavier, but it had more power. It was a bit more practical because of the four doors, and was overall still a great car and a great platform. The seventh generation Honda Civic Si is definitely an interesting one. And to many, it's the forgotten generation. Personally, I do like the styling of the seventh generation, but to many, it was a very polarizing topic. But the looks weren't the only weird thing about this generation. For this generation, it was kind of an in-between generation where Honda was still testing the markets and trying to understand whether North America was a good place to fully implement the Civic Si lineup. And because of that, it was actually wasn't even manufactured in North America. It was manufactured in England, in which it was imported into Canada and the United States, where it was actually known as two different things, the Honda Civic Si in America and the Honda Civic SIR in Canada. 
In terms of changes and specs that the 7th generation received, it shifted away from the 1.6 liter B-series and introduced the K20 series. It also introduced a 6-speed manual transmission. It again produced 160 horsepower, but the difference this year is it produced 130 foot-pounds of torque instead of the 111 from last year. But unfortunately, it revved out at 7,000 RPM instead of 8,000 from the previous generation. This generation had a curb weight of 2,780 pounds, which is almost 200 pounds heavier than the previous generation, hence the torque increase. The 7 Gen SI, or SIR, depending on where you live, had a fuel rating of 26 city, 31 highway. In 2005, it had a base price of $20,000, which calculates approximately $25,000, so right online, if not a little bit under average of what we'd see today. The car featured more power, a new platform. It was a bit more practical, but it was heavier. This was a weird kind of year, I don't know. It seemed kind of weird. They introduced it uh, later in the markets than they usually did in the previous years, but overall, it still was a great platform, but as you can tell, the hatchback design has gone and went. That was basically the last generation where, where they had the ha Honda Civic Si hatchback, and they kind of did it for a reason. The styling was a bit weirder. I enjoy the the sedan or the '92 hatchback more, but overall, the 7 Gen Si was a great package. And if you're wondering why I keep adding the fuel rating, is because I think it's kind of an important thing to, to keep note because it kind of shows when Honda was uh, more focused on performance or if they're more focused towards economics and more practicality. Up next, we have the notorious 8th Gen Civic Si. This generation again had a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine paired up with the 6 speed manual. The 8th Gen Si also had massive power upgrades, going from 160 all the way up to 197 horsepower and 139 foot pounds of torque, 9 more than the previous generation. The 8th generation shined the most with its 8000 RPM redline. However, it did get a little bit heavier, coming out at a 2850 curb weight, but I believe it's justified considering the power gains. And with the 8th generation SI, we saw a huge jump in power, about a 37 horsepower increase, which I believe is the biggest jump we'll, we'll see through this whole entire video. It did get slightly heavier, but I believe that's justified with the power to weight ratio with that huge increase in power. The fuel rating is 23 city and 32 highway. The price in 2006 was about $20,000 which calculated with inflation in 2019, which is about $25,000, which is right on the mark of the average Civic across history. This car also featured a huge jump in the interior. You know, in 2006 on, uh, the industries kind of saw more technology and more effort being put in the interior, and this car is no exception. We saw upgraded seats, you know, more multi multimedia, and we also saw the heads-up display, which is pretty cool. And in this generation, we also see the highest revving Honda Civic Si so far, coming in with a 8,000 RPM redline, which is absolutely awesome. I love the HN SI, which is actually why I own that car. And overall, amazing generation for the price. Coming up next, we have the ninth generation Civic SI. This generation had a huge change to the platform, going to a K24. The ninth gen had a 2.4 liter four cylinder, paired up with the six speed manual. In terms of horsepower, it had a disappointing increase coming in at 201 horsepower. However, it did receive a huge torque upgrade coming at 170 foot-pounds of torque, up 30 more from the previous generation. In terms of redline, this is the beginning of the end coming in at a 7,000 RPM redline. PS, it's only gonna go down from here, unfortunately. And it had a 2,900 pound curb weight which is only a little bit more than last generation, justified though by the power increase. So for the ninth gen, we see a decent increase in weight. However, there's more torque, a bit more power, so I believe it's kind of justified. It had 22 city, 31 highway, which went down a bit from the previous generation, but that could be because of the added weight and the more power. However, we did see the introduction to the K24, the 2.4 liter four cylinder, which did actually decrease the RPM red line, which is very sad. And honestly, it's gonna be a current trend throughout this video, because we're gonna see a lot of lower revving cars, which is very sad. In 2012, this car came in at a base price of $23,000, which is about $25,500 in 2019. And again, that is on par. If not, I think that's pretty, that's basically average. I think 25,005 is about the average throughout the history of the Civic Si. One thing to keep in mind with this generation is this car saw a major jump in the interior and the features that you get with it. And last but not least, we have the 10th generation Honda Civic Si. This generation received huge changes, going from NA to a turbo platform. 
And with that being said, we see the end of VTech within the Civic SI lineup. Fortunately, it's still in the Type R, who knows for how much longer. The 10th gen has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, and in my opinion, produces a disappointing 205 horsepower. I really wish it was around 215 to 220 to stay competitive. However, it did receive a huge torque increase coming in at about 192 foot pounds of torque, which is about a 22 increase from the previous generation. The curb weight comes in at 2,900 pounds, which is the same as last generation. However, it did receive a power upgrade, so there should be noticeable power gains. All right, and for the 10th generation Honda Civic SI and the current generation as of 2019, we saw a whopping 28 city, 38 highway, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, way better than all the previous generations, which really does explain further why they added the turbo. And again, this car actually came in at a base price of $25,200, which is really great to see because if you notice the trend throughout history, that means it's actually coming down in price, which is really great for the consumer. It's especially great because this car had loads of features standard. And I don't, I don't really care about interior as much, but if you're gonna get the standard features, it's, it's only a positive. So this car of course had more power, but in my opinion, the 205 horsepower is a little bit of a letdown. Of course, uh, you have more torque, but in my opinion, it's a bit of a letdown. Um, I think with the shift to turbos, it, it, it's, it's, it, it was only bound to happen in my opinion. It's really sad that they did take away the, the VTEC, you know, it's, that's that's what made a Honda Civic a Civic. That's what made a Honda Civic unique. But of course, you know, this car is super practical. It is way better in gas. And in fact, it actually went down in cost. You know, this thing hits off so many boxes. So, you know, even though it's not a VTEC car anymore, it is still a Honda Civic SI. It still has the best handling that we've seen yet. It has the most power. It still is a great car, but why VTEC? Why Honda? And so after hearing all of that, what is my opinion of the best Civic SI generation? Well, in my opinion, it is the 8th generation SI. I believe this generation provided the most purest driving experience with that high revving VTEC engine, the last of its generation, unfortunately. Tied with an amazing value, you can pick up one of these cars at an amazing price point on the second hand market. But not only that, they have amazing tuning potential a very large aftermarket support, an upgraded interior that still kind of holds up to 2019 standards. The 8th generation SI is the last generation of the high revving VTEC engine that we've all come to love. Now that Civics have changed over to turbocharged engines, it is very sad to see the VTEC go away. The 8th gen Civic SI was the last car to retain its a more lightweight status. Uh, just pure oriented driver experience, all wrapped up into a bundle that was very practical, very affordable, and very reliable. With that being said, I do believe that the Civic SI 8th generation is the best generation and is the reason why I actually bought my 8th generation SI. Now again, with that being said, in terms of all around value car, all around practicality, I do actually believe that the newest 10th generation is the best I to date. It is very sad and very unfortunate that Honda decided to take away the natural aspirated high revving VTEC engine that again, everyone has come to love and know. However, with that being said, this car is the best practicality. It gets 28 city, 38 highway, the best fuel mileage to date. It has the best power to weight ratio that we've seen. And even though I don't prioritize, you know, interior and features, it does have the best features, of course, to date. All of that coming in at a price point of a base price of around 25,000, it is an unbelievable bargain. It is a daily driver that is also fun to drive. But then again, if you are looking for that natural aspirated, engine, I do believe that the 9th gen is also a really great option. It has a really great secondhand market cost and you will still have that VTEC engagement that do make Civics special. So again, the 9th gen is a really great alternative, but in my opinion, the best all round Civic is the 10th gen. However, in terms of performance and the purest driving experience, I do give it to the 8th generation. Now again, that is subjective. That is completely my opinion. Let me know what your guys' opinions is down below. What's your favorite generation? Thanks for watching my brief video of the history of the Civic SI. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to press subscribe if you did enjoy. Thanks for watching. Watching, I'll see you guys next time.